Today's show title is Are Miracles Real? A couple of weeks ago, my granddaughter with a sprained ankle went to the healing rooms in Bethel Reading and she was prayed over and one woman walked up to her and said, I had a dream about an ankle and I believe you will get your miracle today. She prayed, we prayed, we all looked in anticipation at her ankle, which by the way, she went to the hospital for and was in a full cast on crutches, whole nine yards, right? We all looked at her after the prayer and nothing happened. And I said, well, let's activate this. Let's gently step on it carefully. She says, ow, 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 I can't do that. Two days later, Sunday morning, she gets out of bed. I don't know what she was thinking. This nine-year-old puts on high heels on a sprained ankle on the ground, not standing on it, steps on it, and is running, jumping, everything changed instantly, and she could not walk on that thing. Now we're all, slow down, slow down, too much. In excitement, I called my parents, and I said, yes, what happened? Cece was completely healed, and it happened overnight, two days later, and she's, not, she's running, she's jumping off hills, and the reaction was very skeptical. They just were like, oh, okay, that's great, cool. And I'm like, how can you not be excited about that? Today's show is about, are miracles real? And with me is Elijah Stevens, who just completed the movie documentary, Sent Proof. Oh my goodness. When you watch this movie, it's an eye opener. And you can see the atheists, the struggle, the fights, and back and forward people not knowing what to do about miracles. So Elijah, you created this documentary. Why? Oh, because I grew up wrestling with miracles. At one level, um, I went to church as a kid. At another, I, I was abused by my mother who taught church to me. And she watched Christian TV and she had an illness and they said, um, God's going to heal you if you send in money. And so she sent in money. I... And so there's this part of me that's had encounters with Jesus where I go, I believe Jesus is real. There's a part of me that's highly skeptical of miracles. Wow. And I wanted to go on a journey and to find if the evidence for myself. Well, can we check out the trailer right now? Please. So let's watch what this is about. This man's spinal cord had been severed and he was totally healed. To see a little five-year-old girl that's never heard before, when all of a sudden the ears open, that's enough for me. I don't need to see a doctor's report. Jump up, man, start running. The standardly understood definition of a miracle is an occurrence that has no other good explanation. There are many people mistake things that happen entirely by chance as some sort of miracle. I mean, there are hundreds of millions of people who claim to have experienced divine healing. Are you going to dismiss all of that? My passion has been to bridge the gap between the intellectual and the supernatural. I heard all of these testimonies of people having extraordinary miracles. What I wasn't seeing was objective evidence. So I decided to go find it myself. I just speak to all pain in the shoulder in Jesus' name. Is the pain gone? And I say full healing in the name of Jesus. Why do you think the miracles don't happen when the cameras are on? Some testimonies are false. Some testimonies are exaggerated. Miracles don't happen. The moment you investigate them carefully from a scientific perspective, they unravel. Be skeptical. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. Wanting evidence is not a lack of faith. 
there's power and proof. Two or three miracles are anomalies, but thousands of miracle case studies would change the way we think about the world. Wow, what a trailer, what a movie. I've seen the full movie and especially the end really grabbed me. I'm not a crier and I had tears in my eyes. I was glued to the screen and I wanted even more than what you had to offer. What was the process in starting this and why did you begin Scent Proof? Um, well, I shared, I wanted to look at the evidence for miracles and so I put up a website try to collect some stuff when I was a student at Bethel and it really went nowhere because I didn't understand anything about the internet at the time. And then uh, one day I get a text from my friends. I'm at my house and it says, uh, Sean Bolts has called your name out at Bethel. Wow. And so I drove to the church. Um, he tells me my name, my birth date, that I lived in Chattanooga, grew up in Georgia, my wife's name, and he's like, God's commissioning you, go make the film, it's gonna touch lots of doctors' lives. And now, you just said that in one sentence, <laughs> and I'm like, I, when I watched that part in yeah. Sandproof, yeah. it was much more than that. I was like, yeah. it was so much more than that. Because here you are, and, and, and somebody texts you, you're not here right now, you should have been, yes. you probably had a little voice telling you show up and you're like forget it I'm not going right. is that what happens well I, I was skeptical I thought well maybe there's another Elijah and then other people started texting me he called out Elijah and Allison and that's my wife's name so I'm like yeah I've got to go you and gotta I go. gotta go as fast as I can and so I got there and yeah I got this prophetic word now was that the point actually you got so frustrated by trying to get medical evidence mm -hmm. that you wanted to quit you're like forget this well there it was this point where I felt like quitting um, because there's so many things that can go wrong in these cases uh, you know someone's medical records have been destroyed most people don't know um, older paper records get burnt for All some that. reason. Um, uh, they missed a paper. Someone uh, didn't get the test they needed. And so it, it was highly frustrating. And, and you know, you might understand that too, because there are so many skeptics out there right now, and I can't blame you. But stay tuned. We'll be right back for much more. Bart TV, the stories we bring, the problems we show, the solutions we present are real. They are raw and they are authentic. The stories we share are with real people. Are you struggling or do you know someone that has problems? We want you to know that you are not alone. Many can relate. Are you afraid? God wants to give you peace. Do you feel unloved? Know that God loves you. God wants to give you love, peace, joy, and hope. It's all about the real deal. Barb TV wants to share with you its resources, answers, and hope. It is time to not live in a mediocre life, but for you to step into your full potential. God has great plans for you. We have great answers, resources, and hope. BarbTV.org or 855-515-5550. With me is Elijah Stevens, which just released the movie Sand Proof, a must watch. So you're at, you're going to, you're driving like crazy maybe to the, to the church, right? Sean Bolts called out your name, called out your, your wife's name. You are there. Now you're standing there. For some reason, they reconnect back to you this 15, 20, 30 minutes later. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Oh, he tells me all these things about myself. And he tells me that God's commissioned me to go make the film. And so we're just excited that night. We go home and neither one of us could sleep. We just kept <laughs> playing it over and over and over again. And then we just go on this journey where... We're like, how do we research miracles? How do you turn on cameras? Like, I, I didn't have a film background. You had nothing? Nothing So whatsoever. God called you out, like, out of nowhere to do something you knew nothing about? Right, <laughs> yeah. And then yet, when you check your background, and later, I could see why he chose you. Mm -hmm. So well, how did the journey keep going after that? Um, and so we started 
connecting with healing ministries, and, and I got connected with Randy Clark, who runs the Global Medical Research Institute, or he started it, and now they're an independent organization, and wow. uh, they research miracles, and they try to publish them in peer-reviewed medical journals. Um, and the reason for this is if whoa, you... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. In what kind of a journal? They're, they're medical journals. Ah, okay. Um, that are... Because it's the highest standard in our society of investigation is if you can take something and research it so thoroughly that it gets published in a journal, that means that other medical professionals who don't necessarily agree with you go, this is a case of something we cannot explain medically. Ah. And so we wanted to have high standards. And so... Part of the journey was sometimes we would get cases all the way to the peer review process and they would go, uh, we're, we're not accepting this one, or they would in, in the process just go, this isn't strong enough of a case. And so that was very heartbreaking. It took years. And so you're learning all these skills at so explain once. Explain to me when a miracle is not seen as a miracle. Well, scientists aren't people who are theologians. So they don't declare things as miracles. They just go, there's a naturalistic explanation for some of these. So ah. if you have certain disorders, um, they may say, well, sometimes those go into spontaneous remission. And so we were looking for needles in a haystack, the most rare cases where you go, these don't go in, in, into uh, spontaneous remission or have if they did, it would be highly unlikely for this factor, or this factor, or this factor. And so we were looking for cases where we know, for the most part, there, there's just no naturalistic explanation. So when I look at my granddaughter, like mm -hmm. I shared in the first segment, and, you know, she literally can't walk. Mm -hmm. They said it was not a terrible sprain, but when you saw that foot... Mm -hmm. I was like, how can you guys say that? The thing looked huge. Went to the hospital, emergency room, was put on crutches, was put in a cast. And then two weeks later, cannot walk on it at all. And I saw it when that sprain happened and went all the way down. And then two days later, after the healing room, she is running and doing crazy stuff. Would that have been a spontaneous healing that would not count as a miracle in the scientific world? Well, nothing counts as miracles in the scientific world. Scientists only look at natural phenomenon. Okay. And so I don't know how fast ankles heal or anything about that. What I do know is when you pray and God answers it, you yeah. say God healed somebody. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to do was find those cases so rare that some of the most skeptical people would look at them and go, I don't know what to do with this one. And so um, I don't want to discount miracles or say you even need science to prove a miracle. God can speak in a dream. Right. There's no evidence of that. But if you are intellectually inclined, you're going to ask, Are there is there evidence for some cases of miracles? And that's what this movie is about, is just let go, let's look at the best evidence of these cases and, and decide for yourself. And what I liked about the movie that you had all sides of, of the miracles, the skeptics, the, the atheist, the non-believer, the believer, all of it was in there and you went after it. How hard was it to find actually some medical proof? How long did it take you to actually find some people that would qualify to be part of the movie? Um, we found some people really early on. Oh, wow. But what happened was it takes years to publish this stuff. So if you hand me a miracle case today and we're writing it up and putting it in a journal article, it may be a year, two years. No way. Yes. And I did not know about that. And so this whole process took way longer than I could ever imagine. Wow, no wonder it took seven years to create your movie. I'm like, that, that I, would, I would just say, done, journal, done, yeah. move on, right? That's just how I work. But I never thought of the whole backtrack and somebody new stepping into that. There's one particular person that was, it should just touch me. You have a lady in there in Sandproof that went completely blind 
was there medical evidence for her mm -hmm. with that blindness? Um, she was blind, I believe, 13 years. Yeah, she, I believe at age 16, she developed juvenile wow. macular degeneration. And so she went to the Mayo Clinic. They told her you're going to be blind. Um, she ended up getting married, going to Braille school where she learned to read Braille, ended up somehow learning the piano. So she was had a child and she kept, you know, she was thriving in life wow. despite her blindness, but her family was in some financial situation where her husband one night was just desperate and he said, God, um, you know, you've got to give me a better job or you got to heal Marilyn. And you can guess <laughs> what happened. Um, so she gets her sight back. And what we weren't able to put in the film is there's a revival that kind of comes out oh. of that in the town of everyone knew she was blind. Everybody knew. Yeah, of course. Oh, wow. Of, of course. And so people were coming from miles around. Um, they were calling each other. And so... I think that is what miracles do, is they excite people about what God's done, and it, it's very beautiful. She, and they were able to test her I want to hear more about that. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be? Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. This last year, I went to the Easter service about a year ago, and I was there and I was so fed up. I had poison oak for eight months. And I finally told the Lord, I said, you know what? I no longer have wasting time for constantly having to deal with this poison oak. I would pick it up everywhere. And during the service, during worship, all of a sudden, I knew it was, it was done. It was just, and I had it all over my body. And it, it ended right. I didn't pray. I didn't do anything. It just stopped right on the spot. I was like, wow. And my husband afterwards said, do you still want to go up front for prayer? I said, no, it's done. I know it's done. And from that moment, it got better. And it has not been the same since. But the biggest miracle when I grew up, not in the supernatural, not in the Pentecostal world, but more in a little more conservative Christianity, the biggest miracle that I heard about is when my grandmother was told she was going to die and that everybody needed to say goodbye. And they checked in her spine and in the hospital, black blood was coming out of her spine and they said say goodbye that moment a pastor walks in crying and upset he says I've never done this in my life I don't know what to do this but God says you're going to be healed from that moment she got better and after a massive stroke she even started driving a car and lived for I think 30 more years it was something like that 40 even and everything changed we have somebody here today that tried to get medical proof and he got it. You dealt with the blind lady. Mm -hmm. 13 years later, mm -hmm. there was medical proof she was blind. You said it started a revival in her town? Yes. Um, so what happened was her husband worked at a bicycle shop. And he calls his boss and he says, um, can I get the day off? Uh, my wife just got her sight back. And the guy says, He's like, what? <laughs> yeah, and the guy's like, no, come in. So he didn't give him the day off. No yes. way! So he ends up going into work, and he's so excited. He's just telling everybody. And so they start telling people, and hundreds of people start showing up. Um, they would uh, want to see her, probably. They wanted to see her, so she came into town. And, yeah, they, they got to tell people about Jesus and... The Lord actually ended up sending her all around the world, uh, giving wow. her testimony. And so, yeah, that's just one of the miracles that, you know, I found and I'm, it blew my mind. Yeah, I, I could see why. Well, the other documentary that you're meeting with, I think his name was Adrian. 
-hmm. There was this man that also had medical proof that wasn't he crushed underneath an axle? Okay, yeah, his his name was Bruce and a truck fell on him and uh, it crushed him and down to like half of an inch or an inch and a half. How can you stay alive with that? I don't know. Um, That was a big truck in the movie. Yes, yeah, Uh, it was a semi. And he said his spirit came out of his body <sighs> and uh, came back in and uh, they did operations on him. But they cut out so much of his intestine that he had a short bi- bowel syndrome. Was that only three feet left or so? I, it was I short, think right? Something like that, yeah. And so they cut it out and then he goes uh, to the doctor or, and the, he, he just tells him, look, with this few, you're not gonna be able to feed yourself, you're going to die. Oh no. And um, you know, you can't even get intravenous uh, treatments that will, will save your life. And so he made his peace, um, and then this evangelist feels led to come pray for him, and he prays for him, um, he feels his intestines begin to grow, and uh, weird. Yeah, he feels like he said it feels like a snake uncoiling in yeah. my body. And then he, uh, you know, they recheck him, and he, a, a portion of it has grown back, a large portion of it's grown back. He's healthy today, still alive, and he's traveling the world telling people about Jesus. Wow, wow. And all that just, and there is medical proof for mm-hmm. it. Yeah, there's before and after records. And so it, it, it's an amazing case. Um, and so I want to encourage your audience, if they have had supernatural healing, to go to my website, sendproof, S-E-N-D, proof.com, and go down to the bottom, and there's a request for miracles. If you fill that out, it can go to our researchers at the Global Medical Research Institute, ah. and they can help gather your records. You don't have to have your records. Um, and they, if they look at the case and they go, this would be a good one, they'll try and put it in a peer-reviewed medical journal because I believe this will transform culture, that if we have enough cases published, people will start taking Christianity more seriously. Wow. And I, I could see making that difference. Like I said, often you say, oh, this just happened to me, or poison oak is gone. It, mm-hmm. Like as little as nothing, right? Or, or when, when my knee got instantly healed and Indermotrius just left my body and you know, all these healings built faith and stories built failed and God wants to do it again. Mm-hmm. Is that why you made the movie? Well, that, that's a part of it and it's also, it's harder to dismiss. If I pray for you and you have a headache and the headache goes away, you can go, well, maybe it's the placebo effect, something else. When an entire medical research team looks at it and they go, we don't have a naturalistic explanation, and then they have to write it up, review everything about that case, bring a specialist in, and then that specialist has to look at it and he, and then they have to look at every medical journal on that topic and then send it in for other doctors to review and then put it in a journal. You go, that's really hard to dismiss. Yeah, it and is. And so what I want to do is to make cases that are more and more undismissible mm-hmm. um, so that people just wonder, like, oh, I wonder why this happens wow. right after prayer. And I hope that points people to Christ. Yeah, and it actually backs it up in the Bible, what you're mm-hmm. saying, you know. It, it's, the proof wasn't always there probably, but um, 1 Peter 2.24 is one of my favorite, favorite parts of the Bible. And, and this is what it says. It says, He himself carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we would be dead to sin and live for righteousness. Our instant healing flowed from his wounding. Hmm. So when you read that and you just look at that right now, you say, well, is that proof? Or how would you respond to that? Hmm. What, what, would, what do you mean? What is, is you, you hear that. What I'm basically saying is 
God does miracles oh, today, yes, yes. and He was going to do it. It talked about it in Isaiah, and it talks about it in First Peter. I have prayed for people; they were healed, but I couldn't get the medical evidence you're talking about. So, when you look at all that, what is your end conclusion after making the movie? What is your end conclusion after you read the scripture? After your incredible, horrific childhood, mm -hmm. you know, well, there were some I'm good things, but a lot happened, and you want to prove that God was real. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten that? Oh, definitely. I, I, I feel what happens is if you think of how confident you're some, of something on a continuum, like I grew from it could be the case to probably the case to highly confident. Yeah. And so what it does is it just grows my confidence. Oh, the scripture backs this up. Uh, the medical evidence backs this up. Other people's testimonies back this up. And so it completes kind of your confidence so that it compels you, all right, now I have to go pray for the sick. Wow. And then you start seeing stuff for yourself. And so that's the heart behind the film, it, to eliminate every Christian's excuse for not praying for the sick with expectation. If people want to get a hold of this incredible documentary, which I highly recommend, where can they find it? You can find it on the Send Proof website, sendproof.com, or Amazon Video right now, Amazon Prime. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us at the show. Wow, wow, wow. I have seen miracles. I have prayed for people that were healed. Jesus is real today. Jesus is active. Go see that film. And I tell you, God loves you. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be? Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. Today's show's title is To Know the Father's Love. I realized that I had had this obstacle keeping me from experiencing God. And Jesus showed me He was in me. He experienced every tear that I cried, every loss of identity and innocence. He experienced it as though He, he was me. And then I was like, oh, I finally feel one with Jesus.